so when you speak about the inspiration that is, uh, you know, bringing about this innovation, which of course is very visible here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much happening since 30 years ago when I first uh, came to live here. So many things have happened. What do you feel is the source of that inspiration, uh, even in yourself, because you have been a very innovative person. Where is this innovation coming from and what do you do to support uh, that inner space, that consciousness, as you called it, that then leads to practical innovation? That's a very, could be a very long answer to that, but um, we are all byproducts of society, so me too. But, but I think the, the issue here is, and again I will speak about Brazil, although recently I have had discussion with people in uh, universities in the United States and are discussing that this may be a problem also in other areas of the world. But here in Brazil, which I know better, say, there's always this issue that uh, you can get things done without the proper effort and you find a way around, and that was a culture which somehow attached high value to the guy who can get results without the required effort. And uh, this is also something that uh, disturbed, this has dis disturbed me all along. And uh, when I had the opportunity to, to live abroad for a few years, I study abroad and so on for five, six years, and when I came back, it became clear to me that uh, this was n not necessarily the way to do. And I saw several instances that actually you, you have to do things clearly and properly and with transparency and you get the results done. So, as I was always a very straight guy, and, um, and I, I felt at school that there was not a proper support from the colleagues in a much larger extent than you would see other countries, because in other countries you have the same problem more or less, but here, to an undue extent, people would say, no, don't be silly, don't study too much, don't commit too much yourself, and if you really get good results, people try to undermine you somehow, instead of trying to match you, they undermine, bring you here, and we all have the same as say the mediocre performance. And this disturbed me and many people. When I, I came back to Brazil, I made it a point. So it, it reinforced to me that this was possible. And I have some instances I will not mention here, but I can remember some specific situations maybe we can talk about later. Uh, but really it was a turning point. I said, listen, this is wrong, what we're doing here, here in Brazil. So I came back and I continued very straight and I got a professional career which was rewarding that behavior. And that's when I decided to say, listen, instead of only getting that, the things done the way I do, I will, I will spell this out because I see there are more people like me which would like to defend the fact that we have to be transparent and that are not doing that because there's a lack of reference. So that's when I said that when I became president of the ABN AMRO before Banco Real, that's 15 years ago, I said, no, I did that without compromising, so I'll, I'll spell this out, I'll spell this out. And, and then people say, but what do you mean by that? And that's when it became, the, the game is a rough game, but we aim at the ball, not the opponent's leg. Uh, but what do you do specifically, and how do you can make it tangible? And then we went into the whole process. Mm -hmm. But I think the, 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 the personal inspiration comes from, from family values, but from many people. I think we were lacking and we were ready for some people like Guilherme Leal and Natura and, and some other people to come up and say, listen, there is a different way of doing business here and they can be very successful and uh, there is no reason for you to think that uh, there is need to compromise. What were some of these uh, turning points for you? Uh, one, one interesting situation that happened, uh, and as I was studying in, in, in Switzerland, I did an, an MBA there, and uh, on a certain, certain day, um, a guy came, uh, we had some tests on that particular day, and the guy came, it was a European, and he had tan, and, had, and people asked him, what were you doing yesterday? And he said, no, I was sailing because it was a beautiful day. And then the colleagues criticized him. How come you were sailing on a day like yesterday when we had a test today and that this is not to be done? And I was shocked by that scene, which I have it very clear in my mind, because I said, had it happened in Brazil, people would have said, you did it right. Because I had several times actually studied for some test and I was almost ashamed of saying that I had studied. And uh, if, if people had asked me, did you study for the test? I would probably have said, I'm sure I said, no, I did not. Why? Well, actually, I had. 
but not to be socially condemned, I would say, uh, no, I had not. So when I saw that situation, that a guy which had sailed was being criticized by the group, and seeing myself to some extent censored and not being able to spell out that I had studied, I saw that it was a cultural clash and that actually we had an inversion of values where people in Brazil were ashamed of saying that they had put an effort behind what they were doing. And that I had myself also gotten into that. But that was not right. That was not the natural way. The natural way was to go and, 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 and say, yes, I did study. So when I came back and I had this uh, career uh, in banking and so on, I said, you know what, I, I will make it a point. Yes, I did study. Yes, I did do things. Yes, I dedicated. Yes, I worked hard. And not that uh, like the people in, like I had myself in the past. And no, I did not study. And why was I saying that? Because socially speaking, this was not a value. Studying and preparing yourself for something was not a value. And uh, I think today is much better already. But uh, I think that's, if you're if we're looking here for some uh, initiation point, where it really started, it started around these uh, incidents and uh, experiences. On our website, globalleadership.tv, you will find additional footage other dialogues with innovation leaders from around the world, and also the hands-on practices that help them and their organizations to move from inspiration to real change. <laughs>